camera up. You didn't <laughs> do it yet. Good. It'll happen Wednesday. <sighs> oh, hi, oh. everybody. Hi, Jackie. Hi. Hi, Andy. Hey. Hey, Daphne. Hello. And hi, everybody out there. Um, we have a great show for you tonight. We're going to be talking about past lives. So always a fun uh, subject. And our guest today is Daphne. And Daphne is a an empath and um, a medium. Um, I'm actually worked with her at a seance, which was a lot of fun. Do you remember that, Daphne? I do. That was fun. Oh, my gosh. We got such good things in contact with a lot of people that night. That was amazing. Well, I, I felt amazed anyway that um, a lot of stuff came in for me. And um, we even had somebody drive a long way, a couple hours, to come down to our seance. Yeah, and she, had, I would, she was uh, somebody she knew was famous that had come. She took a picture and brought it with us. Right. Um, that was amazing. I remember getting the little memorial thing and, and looking at the picture. And then I, then all of a sudden I saw Tyler Henry sitting in front of me and I go, I'm getting Tyler. And she goes, ah, oh, that was his name. I was like, oh, wow. So that was, that was amazing night. And we were, can't wait to get your story about your regression in your past life. Um, you know, it's always fun to do that. I actually do past lives for people and, um, I love that it connects to something in this lifetime because to me that's validating. And but I've never been regressed for that. Have you guys, uh, Andy or Jackie, had a, any past lives that you know of? No, I don't. I don't think I've even experienced anything where I was like, I felt like I'd been through this before. Right. So. I actually think that most people always identify with um, something exotic like, you know, um, Egypt. Mm -hmm. You know, we, talk, we talked about that before, but everybody thinks that they were Cleopatra or somebody. <laughs> 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 I'm like, well, there had to be some like normal people um, out there. The past lives I've done, I've never hit on a celebrity historical figure yet. So, um, but it's always exciting. Hey, Bree. Hi. I know, I was going to say, Bree. Bye. Are you yeah. going, and going out? <laughs> uh, good to see you, Bree. Thanks for coming in. Um, hey, we see, I see Cheryl too. Hi, Cheryl. Um, anyway, we want to dive right into talking about past lives and, um, and stories. Hi, Cheryl. <laughs> and so I want to start right now with Daphne and and get this, um, you know, amazing regression that she was be able to, that she was be able to have. And, you know, it's not really easy to find someone that you trust to hypnotize you and to do that. And it may be expensive, too. So a lot of people I don't think have gone through that. So, Daphne, can you tell us a little bit about what happened? It's not it wasn't that expensive for me at that time. There was a psychic bookstore that was in El Cajon and a lady I knew, her name was Cheryl. She was one of the psychics there. And I was having some emotional um, confusion going on at that time. And she suggested that I go through a, a regression to see what could happen. And it was, I think it was like $25 at that time. It wasn't that expensive. And she said she absolutely trusted this gentleman and with her blessing, I went and I didn't expect to come out with the information that I did. Um, it turns out that I was a young girl that was a slave girl that was taken from Britain and brought to Italy by a Roman and I was in charge of taking care of the family of this, this who bought me. And the family was really nice. They had two small children. And it turned out that they, the regression therapist asked where it was. And I, not knowing anything about Italy, because I'd never had any desire to go there, I said, Compion. And I didn't know <laughs> until later that there is a district called Compi Compion. So, 
it's Campiana or something like that. And I was actually in Pompeii at that time. And I, I can remember walking through the streets. I remember the markets. I could smell the food. I could smell bread. They had bread hanging. So there were ropes around the bread and they were hanging up in the slots. There was different kinds of produce from carob beans to um, dates, figs, lots of figs and grapes, seafood, lamb, goat. They had everything. And in this market, there were jewelry being sold. It was pretty much like you would imagine a market, but I could smell everything. I could smell meat that wasn't, you know how if you go into a store and you could smell the fish or you could, that's what it smelled like. That's how strong this impression was. And I, I just, I remember going through and I had a good life. I, I know I did, regardless of being a slave, I, I was treated well. And um, to jump ahead on the, on the day that, you know, the, what really got me and what upset me and I think brought me to this point was there was a, I was in bed and there was an enormous earthquake and the earthquake was rattling and knocking things down in my room. Well, the gentleman who owned me came in and handed me a coin and it was a gold coin. It was about this big. And he said, I need you to take the children to the port. They have to go now. And I remember panicking, getting them up. I was about 14 or 15 years old. I wasn't very old. And I don't really remember because I guess it's not that important, but I don't remember how I got them to the port. But the port, I came down and straight, if you look to the left, you would see where the ship was. And it wasn't a very big ship. It was kind of shaped like this and it had a mast. And I went to take the kids up the plank and I was stopped by a soldier who wouldn't let me go. And he hand, I handed him the coin and he put the two children on and they were headed towards Naples. That's where they would be going. Um, I was so upset, but the girl, the little girl and her little brother were screaming, um, Mael, Mael. And they were reaching out like a child would that's afraid. And at that point, even right now, I'm, I'm going to start getting emotional because I feel like I can't protect them. And if you turned away from the ocean behind me, there were tunnels and they were U upside down U-shaped tunnels. And I remember going in, the one that I went into was the second to the left. And I went in there and there were other people in there, mostly women and mostly children. And that's where I know I expired. I know I died in there. It wasn't until years later that I was reading something in a National Geographic and they talked about these tunnels down by a port in Herculaneum and they had found bodies in these tunnels. And I got very, very emotional and started shaking and I'm, I'm starting to feel this now. I, as a person in this life, I'm very protective of children and people around me. If something happens to them, I feel like I have to step in and help. And if they're upset, I feel they're upset and I, I have to be there. And I, I, I think that not being able to be there for those children has lasted lifetimes with me because I feel like I let them down and let their father down. Now I'm hoping that they made it to Naples and I'm hoping they had a wonderful life, but it was, it was an interesting experience. And for people who want to do a past life regression, I highly recommend going to somebody for the first time, because what happens is you could become overly emotional and you need somebody there almost like a coach to help bring you down and calm you down and separate you from that emotion. Um, 
I've talked to people who want to do it themselves, but personally, until you learn to detach from that kind of emotion, from that life, it makes, it stays with you. At least it did for me because I did my own regression a couple of times and it lasted a couple days and it, I really did need somebody there. Wow. What an amazing story. Oh my gosh. Well, you're an empath. So you're going to actually uh, pick up on that uh, emotion anyway. You know, it's, it's going to be really hard. Now, when I do uh, past lives for people, um, I think it's such an easier way. It's not like I'm pulling something out of them. You know, I tell them the story and then they, you know, validate that it has something to do with uh, this lifetime. Uh, but that's got to be an easier one than and I don't think I would get hypnotized. What do you guys think? Jackie, would you get hypnotized? I'd be curious about it just just to see, but I don't. I want to say I would. Be, I would say yes, just to. I don't know, just to experience it and see, you know, if they can write down what I'm saying or record what I'm saying, and I can't remember. Right. You know what, what, this is a sidebar. One thing that I've always wanted to do is to get hypnotized and do what Ed, Edgar Casey did and see oh, if he's I can amazing. do it. And um, I, I've had one person, you know, with experience, um, you know, offer to do this because I really feel like, gosh, if we could sit in, you know, in front of someone and, and, you know, channel, how to cure them. I sure want, I want to do that. I, and I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid at all. If you guys read what Edgar Casey said, what it was like going up to the light, you were ha being pulled off by these low entities, these dark entities or low energy trying to get you off that um, path going up to the light and everything. And I think most people would say, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm like, Hey, okay. I, I sign up for that one. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I really didn't trust the pop process because one time he was laying there and somebody took a piece of paper, you know, set in on it on the session and cross it over his body and boop, he was gone. He was gone. I think for four hours lost up there in the oh. astral, wh whatever they said, he disconnected and he had to find his way back. And I'm like, yeah, maybe I better read up on this just a little bit. <laughs> you know, yeah. but Jack, Jackie, I'll, I'll do your, um, you know, in a few weeks, we'll, <laughs> we'll, I'll do your reading for you. Um, Andy, what do you think? Do you want to get uh, a reading? Um, do you want to get hip hypnotized or what? Uh, I would, I would do both. And I do agree with, um, with Daphne on this. Um, I myself am, a, a very strong empath as well. And when you were uh, sharing your experience, Daphne, I, you took me there and I almost said Pompeii or the other one that, uh, Herculaneum. Mount, yes. And, and, uh, you, you really took me there, um, with your experience. Uh, I was hypnotized once and that was in, Las Vegas, and I was very suggestible. So I, I was up there doing the weird. Um, I don't know. I, I I'm wouldn't like do it. In, I wouldn't like do it in that forum again. You know what? That's show. That's for show. Right. When when I went into the room, it was very quiet. It was very peaceful. I felt safe. There wasn't an audience because for me to come out and talk about this has been kind of difficult, and lately. I have a, 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 fr a very good friend who's also a mentor of mine who's helped me open up and explore, and Rachel. And Rachel is a very gifted medium, very gifted. And she's helped me understand things that I'm feeling to go ahead and express them. And now I'm not afraid anymore. I am feeling a lot more open than when I used to. My husband had taken me to San Diego Museum of Natural History or Museum of Man. 
think it was one of the two. And we went in there. They had the exhibition coming in on Pompeii. And they brought artifacts from there. Mm. Going through there, the whole thing, there was a statue of a goddess. And I knew I sat or stood at her feet. I knew I had and looked up at her. The minute I saw her, I got that emotion in my gut and cold chills that ran up my spine and down my arms. I had been there. I had seen, they had loaves of bread, exactly what I had seen that had um, turned into um, rock that they had brought. It, it was just amazing to be there. One of these days, I have promised myself I am going to Herculaneum and I am going to Pompeii. I want to walk the streets. I want to see what I feel. If, in fact, that's important, I don't know what, how I would react to it, but it is something that I want to go to. And it has, I've always felt, even from the time I was a little child, that I don't belong here. I kept feeling I don't belong in this life. It just doesn't seem right to me. And I'm not sure why. I have a good life. <laughs> you know, I enjoy it. Well, you, I, remembered, you remembered your past life when you came in. And so you're like, what am I doing here? It's, it's not as familiar as where you were just at. That's amazing. I, when you were ex saying what was in the market and stuff, I'm I'm seeing the fish and I'm seeing you know all this stuff, weren't you guys? And part of a thing that some people can do is actually like taste when you're you know bringing this stuff in. You get the taste in your mouth or the smell, and you had all of that through um, hypnosis. It's uh, amazing. But I also prior to this had dreams of a huge mountain that had grapes growing up it and olive trees around. So that, that kind of was a memory that perhaps when I was there, I thought was unique because if I was a Pictish girl and I came from Britain, these are produce and um, vines and trees that I wouldn't have seen in my homeland. And for some reason I thought, it was something that I was able to remember in a dream when I was a small child. Um, it's amazing. I think that when we, uh, especially little kids, when they're, um, they can remember things and they, um, or names or whatever, it's just like, you've got to listen to them. If they are talking about army or they're talking about the ocean or uh, a country and you go, where'd that come from? I've got to look up. I'm going to look up. There's one of my favorite reincarnation um, stories. I'm going to try to get the the link to in a minute. But um, uh, many lives, many La masters. Have you guys read that? No, I have not. Okay, the best little um, reincarnation book ever. So you guys have to get that. It's amazing. What is now, it called Daphne, again? Many lives, many masters. So, Daphne, um, Rachel uh, is fantastic medium. I hope to have her on and both of you on. Um, that would be absolutely wonderful. But when you were talking and I'm seeing you in that other life, a great big funny kind of J came out and then a an A. So I've like been kind of looking online to say, you know, what kind of name had that in it? Because... I kind of felt like there was a J and an A or what we would think would be a J well, and an A. The, the, ga the children were calling when I was being ushered away. They were saying, Mayel, Mayel. And when I looked up that name, it is an ancient Pictish name. And so I, I never figured out. I didn't know if they, it was saying if they were wanting help or come back. But I realized when I wrote that down, that it actually is an old, old Pictish name. So oh I my believe my gosh. name was Mayel. Wow. That's amazing because you, you can't just pick that. You just, you know, dream something like that. That's that real. That's amazing. Ah, I think it's fabulous. Um, 
it must be feel really good though to know that you kind of got the whole story and then you're validated when you see the stuff and and go back and visit will be a, just I, I imagine it's going to be very um moving for you you know to do that too well, I'm i mean i'm hoping I'm hoping that it'll put together any pieces or maybe at that point, if I go back there, it's not going to mean as much as it does the memory of the people that were involved. I don't know. I'm anxious to find that out. Right. Um, I'm still, I'm looking up that book. Um, there was this lady and I, gosh, I hope I remember it right. She was a little girl in England and then she, uh, told her whole family about, Hey, I was married and this was my name and this is the town I was in. And my kids this is were the this. lady from Ireland. Was it Ireland? Was, I'm looking. Yes. Is it no, she was, no, she was from England, but her past life is Jenny was in Ireland and she had seven children. Oh my gosh. Was and that Bridie Murphy? No, uh -uh. I can't think of her name either, yeah. but the one. The Irish woman who U.S. housewife um, claimed to be in a past life. I think the book that I saw was the, the Bridie Murphy um, oh, okay. one. I'm just looking really fast. But there's so many different, um, uh, she is the Irish housewife that was reincarnated. She lived in Denver in 1956. Yeah, no, anyway, that's a different one I'm talking about. Yeah, there are so many out there, though. And um, the one that story that I read, and we'll get the link, guys, and we'll post it. Uh, she remembered all the stuff, and she got the parents to, like, take her to the place and meet these people and her kids were like you know old old people now <laughs> and she said to one like let's just say john this is a tree where you fell out and broke your arm and he's like yes <laughs> it was and she found the way she knew the way to the house so we we have all these great um really facts that these people have come out with all of that. Now, nowadays, it's a little different, you guys. We can get on the internet and kids could get on and make a really good story and go on uh, Google Maps, <laughs> you know? And But back then, when we got those stories, the, you couldn't get that information. There wasn't. I, was, You're not I think I was out. 22 when I was hypnotized. When I did my regression, I was 22. And that was a yeah. long time ago. And mm -hmm. I, you're talking about children's experiences. My mom lived in a condo and she was in the upstairs and she had a patio. If anybody were to climb over it, they would fall down an entire story. So my son was two and a half years old at the time. And he went to climb up on a chair. And I said, no, don't do that. If you fall, you'll get hurt. And he looked at us and he said, like when I fell out of the apple tree and he talked about a compound fracture. He didn't know anything like that. And he looked at my mom and my mom looked at me and he said, Nan, you were there. And wow. so he remembered a past life. We don't have apple trees. We've never owned an apple tree. He's ne he was two and a half. He never climbed an apple tree, let alone be able to explain and describe a compound fracture of the arm. There's no way. That's, yeah. For me, I, I know, uh, I never really went looking for a past life, but I hear a gunshot every once in a while and I just go, Ooh, I just cringe. There's no gunshot. Right. But I can hear a gunshot. And I said, well, that must've been one way I went because I can t totally hear that. Um, but other than that, I've never really, you know, asked, asked or tuned into it, um, to see, I guess I'm just trying to work on this life <laughs> and when, everybody else's. When you are regressed, I'm just going to let you know, you will open yourself up for more lives to come through. It is almost like your spirit guides are saying, okay, you want to know, well, here, because there were several others that I had found out about and 
they, to me, I can differentiate between a dream and something that happened in my past because I can feel, I can taste, I get emotional. Like you were saying, I could smell things. And in a normal dream, I don't get that. I've always dreamed in color, but I don't get the same as when I've had um, like a, a past life that's happened. And so I'm just, that's just one thing. When you open up to it, you may get more than what you bargain for. And so I'm that's why. <laughs> <laughs> it's a no go for me. <laughs> um, that would be a lot to take in, you know, uh, to realize uh, all the different lives and all the different things that happened. My goodness, that would be a lot, but it might explain a lot of things. Like you guys have any infinity to anything like Daphne was Italy or something or Jackie and Andy, do you feel like, Oh, I always think of, you know, this one country or something. Jackie. I See, I just, I just haven't had any place where I'm like, I feel like I belong here. Um, I, I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I haven't really opened myself up to being like more, I don't know, maybe spiritual on that level to allow myself to think that way. Because I think I just lately I've been so into like finding out my roots as to like my Mexican side culture and wanting to know more about my German side of the family and stuff like that. So to me, I'm like, those two things, that's what I'm worried about right now is finding out more about that. <laughs> but Jackie, when you were little, did you ever like, you know, this is what I look at is like those people that have fascination with Westerns, mm -hmm. you know, or fast, you know, fascination. My thing is that I'll watch a, a you know, a Ginger Rogers uh, movie to look at the fashion. I'm just like, and I'm like, where is this coming from? You know, but I will watch all these 1940s shows and attention to the plot. Mm -hmm. I am looking at what they're wearing. I am looking at what's around them. And it feels very comfortable. Yet I'm like, where did that come from? So I feel like there may have been a life there in the 1940s and then, Boy, I came right back. <laughs> Andy, what about you? What what do you connect with anything? Yeah, I sure do. Um, Debbie, I I kind of have the affinity for the nineteen, uh, either the twenties or the thirties for me, um, like the old classic Hollywood. Uh, a little bit that could be a, a previous life to this one, and then also I I I'm very connected to. Um, I feel like the gypsies <laughs> in some form or fashion, <laughs> um, maybe I've carried that along and then it's just awakened in this lifetime, and, you know, through our work that we do as psychics and mediums. Um, uh, other than that, um, I would say for some reason I am... <sighs> I love Egypt and I also love Italy. I've never been to either or. Uh, I love the um, the tradition of it, but I'm not a Catholic. And but I was baptized Catholic, um, uh, raised Lutheran. So it's just some of this stuff is just fascinating so, to me. The so. rituals, like like being in a clergy, like the rituals, right. you are fascinated with that. So then right. maybe a priest or something. There yeah. You go. Yeah. I, I feel like I did something with that along with metaphysical. So it. Well, I yeah. You read, I just... you read the palms <laughs> in your little gypsy caravan. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. Right. So. See you know what, what I read? Go ahead. Je Je I was going to say my mom's my mom's answering my own questions. She's. She thought I was in some kind of entertainment. It might be either because I'm really funny looking or I'm just really funny. I don't know. But um, ah. <laughs> I really think, though, maybe in my past life, I might have been like a writer or something, whether I wouldn't say like novels or books, but um, maybe poetry or something, because I really am into like writing a lot. And 
I have like my manifesting journal. Then I have like my daily journal. Then I have a dream journal. So like I have lots of journals and I've always been really good at writing like sentimental things and birthday cards or like writing a letter to somebody. So that's one thing. Yeah. So that's something I've always been really good at, you know, expressing my feelings that way on paper. So maybe that Mm -hmm. had something to do with my past life that I did. Yeah. So if you have an interest or a hobby or an attraction to something, there you go. It probably came from a past life. So um, I just remembered, I forgot about my past life, that somebody did stop by my work once. I mean, going back decades. And he took my hand and he just said, you know, I can do past lives. I go, okay. (laughs) And he's just like, give me your hand. You want? I'm like, yeah, I forgot all about this. And so he sat there and he held my hand and he looked up in the air. And so he said, oh, I see you in Japan. And I go, are you kidding me? Because I had no connection. I absolutely, when it came to Japan, my girlfriend lived there. She came back and did her whole house that way. And I was like crossing myself. I was like, I can't stand any of your furniture. I don't know what it was. And, um, and then he said, um, I'll let me look at your life and this is what you look like. And you were wealthy and then you died. And I go, well, what did I, what was my purpose? He goes, let me find your purpose. And he goes, I got none. And I said, you mean I got a pass? That's not fair. (laughs) I got a pass on that life. Does it count? But I'm going to tell you this crazy thing, guys, even though I, I really, um, most of my life, just did not like any uh, Japanese stuff. And I don't know why it was. It was crazy. But when I grew up, and, you know, I'm an old lady now, I could take chopsticks and I could eat. And I knew exactly, picked them up, and I knew how to use them. And I would be eating like that. And I loved rice. This was a crazy attraction to a food and I grew up my mother was a cook she told me how to make rice and here's this little kid running home I couldn't wait to run home get up on the chair and I made myself a pot of rice and it it was the most bizarre thing did I like any Asian food absolutely not but I ate rice till the cows came home <laughs> and it was the weirdest thing. And so, um, you know, I, my family, you know, made a little pet name uh, to me about it. And because they never ever saw anybody that would come home and couldn't wait to get home to make a pot of rice, not in San Diego, California, <laughs> not in the United you- States. You and talk that's about way. food. Food is a major memory trigger. And I think what my grandmother was very devout Christian, didn't believe in reincarnation, locked me in her house one time, had a friend come over and they tried to change my mind about believing in it. I am <laughs> not kidding. I called my mom. She came and got me. But my grams and I were so close. So this is a bizarre thing that happened. Mm-hmm. And um she would take me to this health food store and they had an ice cream in there that was carob honey. And when I ate it, no, I'm telling you, it was heaven. I could not get enough of it. I found out it goes back to Pompeii. They had honey and they had carob. And it's not a far stretch to think that they made something out of that together as a dessert because carob was a very, expensive commodity back then. So to eat that, I must have in my subconscious thought, oh, I'm getting something good, you know, something really special here. And so food does. Um, there's a book, two books that I recommend that have helped me a lot. And for people who don't remember, that's okay, because we're supposed to have what is called past life amnesia. But we don't remember. We're not supposed to remember. We're supposed to work on our present life. Mm -hmm. And for people who are really depressed, if they think too much about their past lives, then this life means nothing. And this life is more important to us at the moment than any of our past lives. We have to put a lot. But 
the reason I'm going to recommend these two books is I got to meet the author and he was an incredible man. And the first book is called The Journey of the Soul. And the second one is a follow-up book by him called The Destiny of the Soul. And you should read the first one, The Journey of the Soul first, followed by The Destiny of the Soul. And it goes in order. And it is an amazing set of books. And I found the first book, The Journey of the Soul, I was walking towards the bathroom in a bookstore in Poway. And as I passed the shelf, this book went kaplunk right off the shelf. Wow. And I looked and I picked it up and I couldn't put the book down. So I ended up reading it. And then a friend called and said, oh, I've got a, a couple tickets to, to this, you know, metaphysical author and, turned out to be the author of the book. So to me, that was a loud and clear message that I needed to read that book. And then I read his follow-up. I bought it. No coincidence. None on that one. (laughs) Isn't it funny how the other side just gives us signs like, whoosh, here goes. Oh, what's that? Here, let me throw it at her. (laughs) I know. Um, When I do tarot, sometimes the, you know, the cards fly out and then you look at it and go, wow. Yeah, that that what that meant something. So we always pick up those extra tarot cards and read them. Oh, that yeah. is amazing. I'm going. To, I will uh, post the links after the show on those two. That's amazing. I am just blows me away that um, we can have so many different lives too. But I got to tell you this. When I think of like when people are saying I was a man and I was a woman and on and on and like, I don't think I want to be a man. Do you think I was a man? I don't know if I want to be a man. (laughs) So I may get some surprises along the way. So as far as I know, it's only been Japan. And uh, and that was a waste. (laughs) That was a nothing. Well, maybe it wasn't. Maybe you didn't want to remember what had happened. You were wealthy. You know, it could have been anything. Maybe you affected a lot of people negatively and you don't want anything to do with it because you feel bad about it. I mean, you never know what that life is. I, well, I wish I, the guy would have told me. <laughs> <laughs> he was there. Hey, Come on, tell me. You don't, but you don't know. That's why the hypnosis. Have have backwards. <laughs> I really feel with you. We have to have a purpose for every life that we go into. Now, the one big thing that I come into, uh, with uh, clients and about every other day is somebody who has actually come and bumped into their soulmate in this lifetime, bumped into people that are very a uh, strong bond from past lives. And that is so hard. I feel so bad for them because it do- nine times out of 10, it doesn't work out. Like they bumped into each other and then they went their ways. And one person has this Hat doesn't have an amnesia and they remember it and they're really suffering because they long to be with the person like the person they knew them when they saw them you mm-hmm. know how they say love at first sight mm-hmm. i really feel like it's when you see your soulmate and you go hey i know you you know and i feel so bad for them but i say you know we come here we're doing our lives and everything and you bump in and maybe they have to go do their life and you have to do yours and it's really seldom that you guys get to to go together. And so I think that's sad. But um, I think it's amazing that we do um, come in and help each other. And we, you know, seem so familiar when you're with people, you know, and you go, oh, I know we've been, we were sisters in another life. I know that we were together and friends. Do you guys ever feel that? Like somebody was a kindred spirit, so to speak? Yes. yes. My grams and my husband. My Oh, mine's my mom, mom, for sure. sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to describe our our mother daughter bond. I know I get a lot of friends are like, you and your mom are that close. And I'm like, yeah, me and my mom are that close. Um, I mean, I invite her to do things with my friends that are and we're all in our 20s. I'll be like, come on, mom, let's go. (laughs) But um I definitely do feel like me and my mom have been in each other's lives, you know, over and over again, because we just know each other like inside out. It's 
crazy. She just it makes said you more like friends. It's yeah, almost well, like you're close, closer than friends. Yeah, like we've been sisters or like we've had different relationships in past lives, not always mother daughter. And mm-hmm. um, I really do enjoy that because that, that is one thing I know for a fact, maybe from my past life is that she's been in every life that I've had just because I, the bond that we have and just the way we talk to each other and the way we fight sometimes. <laughs> you fight. <laughs> it's, we don't, you know, not, not that much. Okay. Not, not, hey. not that much. It's, it's always funny things that we fight about where I'm like, no, that guy was not in that movie, mom. And she's like, if I oh. look it up and I'm like, I told you it was this person. <laughs> oh. Hey, Andy. Um, yeah. Do you feel uh, that you've met people, soulmates, or uh, kindred spirits in your lifetime? Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, most most definitely. Uh, I know I have a few close friends, um, or even sometimes it's really strange. I don't know if it's a kindred spirit or if I'm actually connecting to that person's energy. And I remember seeing this really um, – she was uh, – eccentric um older woman in a grocery store and of course she wasn't wearing the appropriate she wore she had a fur on and she looked like somebody that was uh, a millionaire that kind of hoarded her money but she still looked classy uh heavy makeup and everything and i felt like i knew who she was um and i it was a good feeling so i i'm not really sure but if that was a case of that, or if, um, you know, uh, there's been people that I feel like I've known my whole life and we just met. So I would say, you know, it kind of depends. I have a, a lot of people that I meet and it's, it's very strange. And they, they're, I think it's because I work with energy. They just get so comfortable and they go, Oh, I know we were somebody in a past life. And I'm like, really? And I think it's just, more the the energy type of thing that's going on, if you know what I mean. I make sure that everything's warded and it's good energy around. But uh, yeah, that's that's amazing when you, um, hey Sonia, when you um, you know meet up with people and you just hit it off. I went to a party in Albuquerque, New Mexico, at the castle, and um, I went and went into the bar and I got a drink and it was a very um, classy thing here. Very, we were, everybody was dressed up and uh, my eyes kind of met this one lady. What a character. And I was like, Whoa. And it's like, I, you know, I wanted to stare at that lady when she was staring back. And then she came, she finally uh, found me by the pool or something. And she said, you, I just get this attraction and that you are the person I need to talk to. We had the best time. And then she brought in this other lady who I just, I just <laughs> could not believe was the twin for Katie Couric. And I, oh, wow. I even, I talked to her for a while and I said, do you know that you look like Katie Couric? I mean, like, just like her. She said, yes, I get that all the time because I was waiting for it to be punked. You know, like, like Katie Kirk was there or something. And we had the best time, and it was just some kind of a crazy attraction going on. And I was like, that was really different. Um, I do feel very comfortable with people. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, one time I met someone, and I knew that that was a soulmate type of a connection. Absolutely. And I thought that was crazy energy. It wasn't like me. I miss Spock and I don't, you know, uh, tend to get to, you know, go, get into that emotion and stuff. But when I saw that one person, I was like, I know you. The weird thing about this, I'm going to get into this a little bit, is the fact that all my life I was looking for someone, a man with a certain smile and certain eye color. And I knew it was weird. And then I, you know, I always would see and I go, oh, I know that smile. I know those eyes. And then when this one guy came into my life, I went, I know you. And so that's when I knew 
hey, this was amazing and crazy. I have to say if I absolutely knew that I had somebody as a uh, in a past life, it would be my sister Dorothy. We are we have always been absolutely best friends, um, even when we're, when we're apart. And uh, she is like golden. I always call her golden, and I'm wondering why I do that. But I would say you're golden. I don't do that for anybody. It's kind of a weird thing. I think, too, sometimes we have to think of some things that come out of our our mind and our mouth. You know, like, where did that come from? Every once in a while, a little phrase will come out. And I said, well, uh, was that me? But that's channeling, I think. <laughs> yeah. Now, when you're talking about amnesia, Daphne, for me, I do a reading, and then it's, it goes. Within 24 hours, it's gone. And I feel really bad when the people uh, I have a lot of repeat people and they have to say you remember when you told me and I'm like yeah got that nothing me too people do <laughs> that they're like remember when you told me about this it happened and I'm like no, yeah, <laughs> I, no don't clue. I have had this much stuff since we talked happen you know I don't remember that and the message is for you what do you think um the reason is because you were saying we weren't to to remember a past life as a as a psychic and a medium why do, do i lose it why is it gone because do you have any answer? i do i really feel that what our guides and the universe is trying to teach us is that we have to put emphasis on the present we have to learn from this life too many people will be you know, it's like living the past. You don't want to do that. You want to put everything into this life. And if too many people, like when I was saying, if you're depressed and somebody knows about their past life, they'll go, ah, oh, screw it. I'm just going to jump or I'm going to kill myself. I'm just going to get another life. Well, you don't want to do that because this yeah. life is very, very important. Whether it's a lifetime, like you were saying that you could rest Maybe you had a rough life beforehand, before you were in Japan, and that was a life that you were given to rest and relax and get over trauma that might have happened before. But I've, I have known people that have committed suicide, and it breaks my heart because I feel in my gut and from what my guides have told me, they have to come back and repeat it. Mm -hmm. So it's not like ditching out on a test. You can't go forward until you repeat exactly what your, um, you know, what your lesson was. How dangerous would it be to be suicidal or commit suicide and then come back in and remember some of that? If you know? somebody committed suicide and they were saved, okay, do, and they didn't, maybe they had an NDE, a near-death experience, and I've read about people who have done that who and in the books i told you about they have case studies of that exactly that question that you have and they knew that that was the wrong thing to do it was not because no matter how hard it is in this moment of time I, like i said i had a really good friend who jumped off a hotel in mission valley and he couldn't get a job and he felt like he couldn't get a break. His mom, his mom went back to his apartment and there was a message for a job interview there. And if he had only waited, uh, you know, another day or a moment or just called somebody, then his whole life would have, you know, been a lot different, but he didn't. He oh, that's sad. Oh, my gosh. And it was, I, it was, it's heartbreaking. The, the saddest part of the whole thing is that he was gay and he was afraid to bring that forward and talk to anybody about it. And that's, you know, that's a lesson in this life he had to learn and he couldn't, he just lost it. And I will never forget him. And he's always in my heart. And it's just. Have you tried it, to go back hard. and contact him? Have somebody con contact him? To be honest, I can't go to that hotel. It's too traumatic. The thought of it. It really bothers me. There's some things that being a psychic and being a medium 
that I could handle. But when it's too close to home like that, I can't. I can't okay. do it. Aww. I don't honestly, in my gut, I don't think he's there. I think he went right over. I think okay. he, his guides came and got him and took him because I'm not feeling that he's earthbound. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I think he went on. Okay, that's really good. Oh, my goodness. You've had some major experiences, and being an empath, that is uh, extra hard. It's, um, it is, it's difficult when you lose anybody. It's difficult when you lose somebody that you know is going to pass. It, and, you know, when somebody passes, like, I've, and maybe you know this answer to my question that I have or this thought. When somebody passes and we're so distraught because, of course, we're going to meet them. But is there also a little bit of envy knowing that we know where they're going and how what a wonderful time they're going to have in a, you know, when they cross over? Do you ever get anybody who feels that way? Um, I haven't, matter of fact. I really haven't. Um, I really... I really feel like for a lot of people, there's still uh, not a lot of confidence in what actually happens when you transition. You know, you get all these stories about, do you ever hear this one where they all go into a hospital and they convalesce, <laughs> you know, or they, they go and see Jesus, different things that they do. And so I, I haven't really had anybody say that to me or I haven't felt that. So... When my grandmother passed, and I, I was right there with her, and it was very, it was hard for me. But after I left the hospital, I had this euphoric feeling. So I always feel that she was with me, letting me know, I'm fine. This is great. This is fantastic. You have no idea. That's the feeling I got. And right. I, I think that's what people get is that they're so happy. They, they get that great energy, but not envious that they went, you know, but that they know that they're okay. A lot of times my, the clients just want to know if you watch all the TV shows with all the psychics and the medium, what do they say first? I've been to see Sylvia Brown several times in her day. And if one thing you get somebody up there and say, are they okay? Like, of course they're okay. And yeah. so, and that was just like such a relief. But I think when you're spiritual, we know that they're okay. They're, this is great thing for them to have a good transition and, you know, go to heaven. Yeah, that's what I was wondering, because during that process, right after she passed, I, my sister jumped on my case because she says, why are you so happy? And I was trying to tell her that I feel this euphoric feeling. And I wasn't sure, and that was something we talked about, if it was something like, oh, maybe you're envious because you know she's going to a wonderful, awesome place, and maybe that's yeah. the feeling. That's what I was wondering. But I think it was my gramps, actually. Oh, yeah. I think you just felt her, um, you know, and everybody that was with her and angels or anything just leave that love and, and get that high that she, you know, of them going. And, you know, I'm... Um, one thing that I wish I could see is when people do pass, you know, there are some people that go and they can see that the, the people are there and see the angels and, you know, and help like lift the body out and go. That would be amazing. Like what was that show? Is it ghost Patrick Swayze and Demi oh, the yes. movie? Yes. Yeah. You know, I think you could just see all that stuff. That would be great. <laughs> I see spirit if I asked and I want to, then they come in. You know, so everybody's different. Like some people don't see spirits. Some just see them all the time walking around. But I don't have to see them unless I bring them in. And I certainly want to do that. But uh, when people, when I'm around people, they pass when when you're out to the bathroom, guys. <laughs> what is that? You're not in the room and you go, what do you mean they went? I've, I've been waiting all day. And um, so I, I think that would be a, a blessing to be able to. Uh, see if we couldn't contact on that. Matter I fact, saw a couple when I worked at the museum in Old Town. I saw a couple spirits in there that were very strong and showed themselves to me. And it was, it's, it's, I don't see them all the time. And I think it's because it takes a tremendous amount of energy for them to materialize. 
Yeah. But um, I, like I said, I worked there for almost two years and I only saw him a couple of times while I was there. Can we tell people where you worked? Oh, I don't care <laughs> if you it's want. Very, it's a famous place. It's one of the, the um, haunted places in America is the Whaley House in San Diego, California. Uh, I've been there, you know, not maybe three times. And um, there is a lot of people with their, you know, their little uh, EVP stuff and their their apps and everything in there, like up in the theater. Have you guys been up in the theater? Yes. I <sighs> How can I say this? I'm not a fan of how they redid it. <laughs> oh. but, but you know what? It is part of the history of that house. I'm used to it when June Redding worked there because I worked with June. And it was more like when she had it set up, it was more like their personal home. And now it has mm -hmm. the different, like the store that Thomas Whaley had and the courtroom and now the theater upstairs, which in fact they had. They did do that when they were low on money and were trying to make some money. They opened it up for that. But um, I, I still like the old way. It was a little more homey, more like the family. And right. so when I went back, and they've done a beautiful job restoring it and fixing it to that. It's just different than what I was used to. Can I ask you about the courthouse? Was it always the courthouse first or the house first and the courthouse? I think... I think it was the house and then the courthouse. I think the courthouse came in. It's not the first courthouse in San Diego, however. The first courthouse was actually in Old Town. Then that was another one. And then Horton had his guys come and steal the papers to bring it into San Diego. Oh. So that. Well, well yeah. they used to hang the people, and there's a lot of people that have had very, uh, including Daphne, that have very frightening or or paranormal experiences on the grounds and in that building. Uh, I went, but I went with the, I did go with the medium that, um, you know, did see some things. Yeah, and without knowing the history, there was a dog running around later yeah, on. That's Dolly out. Barton. Dolly, yeah. yeah. Dolly. <laughs> And um, but it's I met somebody who went and stayed in it at night all by himself. And he came into my work once and he told me about it. And I was like, wow, by yourself. I don't know that I do by myself. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the house itself was built on the original side of the gallows. And as much as everybody tries to say that the house only has good spirits, for the most part, it does. There was only one incident, and it's been pretty much the most terrifying thing that's happened to me in any investigation I've ever done. And I was working there. We, we had to, when you were setting the alarm, you had to stand in a doorway in order for the alarm sensor not to sense that there's movement or else it would not set. Well, um, my associate was setting the alarm. I'm standing with my back to the courthouse. And all of a sudden, something, the th in my mind, the way I saw it was an undulating mass that came up behind me like this and came up behind me. And it felt, the feeling I got was anger, hostility, rage like you wouldn't imagine, and horrifying. It was just a horrifying feeling. And she could not set the alarm. It was not setting. And when it came up behind me, I gathered everything I had inside of me and said, leave me alone now. And I said it out loud and I said it firm and I felt it like a vacuum pull back into the courthouse. And that feeling made me nauseous. That's how bad that feeling was. And even to this day, I could feel nauseated when that came up behind me. I never felt it again. That was the first time I ever felt it and the last. So the site itself was the gallows. They did not accidentally hang innocent people there. They, you know, there were some bad people that were hung. But another thing people don't realize when you're in Old Town and you're walking down the streets, you'll see little brass plaques like this on the sidewalk and in yeah. the street. Those mm -hmm. are burials. 
Yeah. They put the street in. They didn't take the bodies out because a lot of the bodies were um, transferred to Mount Hope. But they left those there. And those were a lot of Native Americans, a lot of Hispanic people, people that they thought were of low character. They left their bodies. They didn't mean anything. So when wow. you go to the, when you walk Old Town and you see those plaques, just know that. And, you know, I always give a little silent. Hello, I'm here just to let them know that they you know that it's somebody very bizarre just walking in. Here's a sidewalk and then out in the road and you're going, oh, dead body, dead body. And you're like, mm -hmm. why? Why? You know, oh, hey, it is time to do. Uh, we have enough people to do a. Um, a giveaway, a prize, a gift card. So Jackie and Andy, can you go ahead and run this? Somebody just left um, their pet for me to pet sit, and he's been barking outside the door. So can you go ahead and run a contest, maybe a, a numbers one to 100? Have everybody start putting their guests in? Okay. Yeah. Go take it, Andy. <laughs> okay. I... um. I do want to say that we have a um, the checkered lily apo apothecary. Sorry, I can't say that very well. They are our sponsor for tonight. Um, here is the website address. And Kim uh, Boku, uh, she is very talented and... Um, amazing um, owner. She's she's very creative. She's got lots of uh, beauty products, bath and body products. So uh, check it out. Your link. Yeah. So yeah. So, um, Jackie, did you want to uh, go ahead with the the numbers or? Yeah. So if you guys want to put a number down from one to ten, it can be one. It can be ten. We're actually going to have our special guest. Oh, look at him. Nice. <laughs> so, Daphne, um, I want you to think of a number between 1 and 100. And I'm going to scroll down and write down what everybody – oh, look, um, I got one of my coworkers watching tonight. Hi, Angie. Hi, Angie. <laughs> um, kept telling her to watch us. <laughs> so, um, let's see. You got a number for me? All right. I do. Guys I do. Put down your numbers. Let's see who, who can get it. Get some really neat prices. Um, are we giving away some of the new prices, Aunt Debbie? We're going to give away a Starbucks card. Star okay. So you're getting a... You what? get a cup of coffee from <laughs> us and maybe a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> and a cake pop. There you go. <laughs> Let's see. I'm not I seeing... I don't know how much are the cake pops. <laughs> I don't know. Well, if you get a regular cup of coffee and you don't get like the ginormous one... I think a regular cup of coffee might be like what, maybe almost three dollars. Two thirty-five here. Two thirty-five there, and then a cake pop is like another two bucks. Did okay, you guys? Either. Cheryl, you just won. You're not winning again. You have to wait like watch. <laughs> you so. have to wait. Like <laughs> a week. Starbucks cards. So, did somebody think of a number and write it down? Yeah, Daphne, I have Daphne has the number. All right. So I thought, you know, she being our guest, she should she should do the honors and picking a number. Perfect. Oh, I, I'm assuming a cup of coffee here is a dollar ninety five. That's what she just just said. Gee. She would know. She is a barista. Oh. <laughs> Sonia it's picked twenty two. You can get two cups of coffee in San Diego. Um <laughs> Let's see. If somebody wins, the winner, when Jackie tells you you won, you private message uh, us, Psychic Fixes, on the fan page, and we'll go ahead and uh, I'll get it in the mail right away. I got a That's whole bunch. What's for John? What's for John? The cake pop or the number? I think she's trying to cheat you right now. So it's between 1 and 100, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I got Corey. it. 26 angie did eight okay guys i'm gonna give another 10 seconds to put down the number and then i'm, I'm gonna scroll through funny thing was is that i took a picture of the gift cards and put it on the thing and i had already said okay the one that says california on it is going to cheryl and, and i got she... it in 
I went and I mailed it and I came back and she, and there's a comment. I love the California one. I was like, already in the mail. (laughs) (laughs) I am psychic, you know? (laughs) So, all right. Okay, guys, I think that's the last bit of number. So I wrote them all down. Oh, she said the numbers for my dad. So, (laughs) so we got Cheryl with 55, Misty, 44, Sonia with 22, Corey with 26, and Angie with 8. So what was your number? 43. Misty. Misty was the closest. All right. Congratulations, Misty. Wonderful. Misty, make sure that you um, go ahead and private message me your address, and I'll get it in the mail tomorrow. Congratulations. Yay! Congrats, we, we need Misty. the soundtrack. We need the clappy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll do the golfer clap <laughs> next time. <laughs> oh well, you guys, this was great talking about past lives, and I love it. Daphne, please, would you come back again? Okay, um, I'd love to. Thank you for inviting oh, me. That's great. You guys are great. Yeah, oh, thank hey. you, Daphne. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you, you for joining us. There, Daphne. <laughs> thank you so much, you guys. Um, so we say goodbye to everybody. Woohoo, Missy said. That's right. Woohoo. <laughs> um, we will see you, uh, some of you, maybe on Wednesday. We have a YouTube uh, live, and it's the Psychic Life, and that's the channel. Please go by and just, you know, S- subscribe you and like. Subscribe. subscribe and like us yes we'd love that and uh, we'll be back here also on Fridays Um, now Wednesday show is a little different Uh, we work on our mediumship uh, what would you call it Andy our our projects and all that kind of stuff our daily life as a medium uh, and psychic uh, any projects we're working on um, you know just in the comfort of our own space and bring up in any questions or anything that we need to discuss, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. Instead of like having a, a topic like we do here, we're actually working on missing persons cases and doing readings and talking about difficulties or um, events or places we've been and some of the experiences. So it's a different type of show then Friday, but I think it's something that's super interesting. If you really want to look in the life, um, we'll, we're there on Wednesdays at 6.30 Pacific Standard Time, and we're here on Fridays, same time. So hope that you tune again, and we thank you so much for um, being here tonight and listening to us, and we're going to say goodbye now. So Bye. take care. Thank you for having me. Oh, hey, thank you, um, you Daphne. Can we go to the lobby? Let's all go to the lobby. Can we go to the lobby? <laughs> get ourselves a snack. <laughs> can, <laughs> you okay. beep, can we go, beam us to the lobby? Yeah, and it's nachos. I will beam you down. <laughs> okay. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Let's see if Andy can do it.